Now with the Nux image component, we have the ability to specify responsive sizes for our images, which is something that you'll more commonly do when building out applications. Now in the previous lesson, we took a look at how to use the Nux image component with a static image with our icon. And in this lesson, we're gonna take a look at integrating a hero section, which has a hero image in which we wanna have responsive sizes for. Now back inside of our Nux application, we're gonna to go to the index page, which is where we're gonna integrate this hero section. So what we wanna do is remove the content that we have and we're gonna create a main tag. Then over on the GitHub repo, make sure that you're still under the instructional code branch. We're gonna grab this first section, which contains our hero. So we can copy this and then we can just paste it into our main tag here inside of our index.view. And back inside of the GitHub repo, if you haven't done this already, we want to head back to our public folder and we want to grab this hero icon, which is called nuxcoursehero.png. So we can click on this and then we just want to download this. And now that we have our image located inside of the public folder for this hero section, if we head over to the Nux application, you should now see the hero being displayed inside of our app. So for the hero image, again, we want to swap out the native image tag for the Nux image component. And what we're also going to do for this image is we're going to apply the densities prop. So that way we don't have the increased pixel density for this image. So all we want to do for this is say X1. Now to make our image responsive for different screen sizes, we can use the sizes prop with the Nux image component. And this accepts a space separated list of screen size and width pairs. And if we select on this link, we can see a list of all the screen sizes that the Nux image component uses. And what's really nice about this is that it shares the same naming and sizes as the Tailwind CSS library, and they even added an additional breakpoint for extra small. Now, the Nux image documentation has a pretty good example of how this sizes prop works. So the initial value you can see is going to be 100 VW, which is 100% of the viewport width available. So the image will stay at that size until it reaches the breakpoint that we have set, which is going to be small. Now the small breakpoint by default with the Nux image component is 640 pixels. So once you get to that breakpoint, it's now going to be 50% of the viewport width available at 640 pixels. So the image will now be 320 pixels wide. And then once it reaches the medium breakpoint, it's going to be set to a fixed value of 400 pixels. Now the image that we have for the hero section is going to be fine in its full size. However, once we get down to smaller screens, so if we go to inspect our application, you can see that the image is now going to be much smaller and it's going to get even smaller as we get down to a smaller screen size. So as you can see, the rendered size for this image is almost half the size of the intrinsic. So what we can do is use the sizes prop on the Nux image component to render out a smaller version for users that are on mobile. And then we can render out the full version, which is going to be the intrinsic size for users that are on tablet and desktop. So on the component, we can start off by defining our sizes prop. So the first thing we want to define is going to be our extra small breakpoint. So we can say XS, and this works very similar to when we define our media queries or breakpoints with Talon, where we can specify the LG and then we can apply the class. So it works very similar to that. And for the extra small breakpoint, we want to define a value of 100 VW. And this is going to make the intrinsic size of the image be 320 pixels wide. And it'll stay this way until it reaches the next breakpoint that we define. Otherwise, it'll always stay at this width. And here inside of our application, you can see that the intrinsic size, no matter how big our screen gets, is only going to be a maximum of 320 pixels wide. And if we were to open this up in a new tab, you can also see that as well. Now, as you may be able to see, the image right now on the desktop version looks a little bit grainy. And that's because the intrinsic size is a lot smaller than what the image is being rendered out at. So what we can do is define an additional breakpoint and render out our image to be much larger at a certain breakpoint. So what we're going to do is define the small breakpoint, which is 640 pixels wide. So if we take a look at our image down at the bottom, you can see the dimensions are 667 pixels wide and 550 pixels tall. Now, since the size of our image is roughly the same size of the small breakpoint, which is 640 pixels, we could set the value at the small breakpoint to be 100 VW or 100% of the viewport width available. Or what we could do is render out the exact width of the image since we know it's 667 if we want it to be exact, which I think is what we're going to do. So instead of setting this to be 100 VW, we'll set this to be 667 pixels. And if we take a look at the images here inside of our elements, you can see we have the one rendered out at 320 pixels, and we also have the additional one rendered out at full size. 
And again, if we wanted to, we could also make this format to be a WebP to make our images even more performance. So let's also do that. So we'll change the format to be WebP. And with that change made, you're not going to notice a difference in the quality, but with the image itself, you can see that the file size will have been reduced significantly, which again is going to reduce the amount of data that the user needs to download when visiting your application. Therefore, it's going to improve your application's performance.